Hello, Shakespeare students. This is Dr. Newman. I just wanted to say a bit more about Act 3, Scene 2. Um, there is some, I think, an important thing that I wanted to get back to uh, yesterday that we didn't quite get to. So I'm going to use this um, opportunity to just circle back to that. And that has to do with the relationship between Hermania, Hermia and Helena. Um, we talked about um, how in this comedy, there is uh, some of the central characters get tested or tried, this idea of the bosanos, the trial, the torture even. And so um, one of the main sources of this trial or testing in Act, in, the, in Act 3 of A Midsummer Night's Dream is the conflict between these two friends, the friendship um, that's gone sour to the point where they almost end up fighting to each other. Um, and I want to just look briefly again at um, Helena's... Uh, impassioned words to hernia to hermia to hernia um in uh, act three scene two and these are lines 198 to oh, sorry yeah 198 to 218 um where and if you see before you uh on the screen here this is the original spelling from first folio uh and her her helena says to hermia is all the counsel that we two have shared the sisters vows the hours that we have spent when we have chid the hasty-footed time for parting us, O oh, is all forgot. Have you forgot about all the time we spent together? Our school days, friendship, childhood innocence? We, Hermia, like two artificial gods, have with our needles created both one flower, both on one sampler, sitting on one cushion, both warbling of one song, both in one key, as if our hands, our sides, voices, and minds had been incorporate. Now, it's common in love poetry to talk about the union of bodies between the lover and the beloved, right? Um, and this speaks to, if not a homosexual intimacy, an intense homosocial intimacy. Um, the word homosociality is a term that was coined by the, the uh, literary and gender theorist Eve Sedgwick to talk about the intense same-sex relationships um, that in many ways, um, were more predominant before the 20th century. And um, one of the sort of conflicts in Midsummer Night's Dream and in many of Shakespeare's comedies is the movement from uh, a stage of youth where your primary intense relationships are same-sex friendships to uh, the kind of separation that has to happen in order to engage in a same and in a well, in modern days, potentially same sex, but in Elizabethan times, certainly a heterosexual relationship that culminates in marriage and the fulfillment of your sort of family responsibilities as a mature adult. And this isn't easy, right? I mean, it's never easy. I think you can even, uh, many of us can think of our own experiences. I mean, I remember back when, you know, your friend has a girlfriend or something like that, and you never see us anymore. And I think that um, is being expressed with a special intensity here, that movement from from homosocial friendship to mature heterosexual marriage, as was dictated by Elizabethan culture. But it's not always easy. It's not always painful. And it's one of the factors that um, issues in the conflict, the pain, the testing. Um, and so we grew together, she says, like to a double cherry. And that's, of course, an image of sexual maturity, seeming parted, but yet a union in partition. Union and partition is an image for two lovers that's used by uh, John Donne and William Shakespeare and many other love poets. So this really is a, an, a, an, a passionate language that Helena is using. And some have wondered, you know, if she's running into the woods to chase Demetrius, who's chasing Lysander and Hermia, who is she really jealous of, though? Who is the real object of her jealousy? Um, likewise, some have, have asked, you know, when Hermia... Uh, sees Lysander run off and, and nobody loves her, we, um, we can ask, was it really Lysander that she loved or was it being loved? Is it this idea of being in love with the idea of being loved? We'll see this idea of being in love with lo love again when we read Twelfth Night and meet Duke Orsino, who's just likes to pose as this sort of Renaissance lover. Um, anyway, I'm just just wanted to shed a little more light on this, what I think is a big theme in Shakespeare's comedy and um, in this play in particular, and that's this 
this sort of conflict between love and uh, between romantic love and friendship and the um, intense importance of friendship for Shakespeare and for the people who inhabit Shakespeare's plays. So um, if you have any questions about this, feel free to bring it to bring them to class. But we'll be moving on to Acts 4 and 5 and hopefully finishing A Midsummer Night's Dream tomorrow. Um, so have a good day. Bye.